Hooray! Year later, I am back in the town of my childhood Mariinsky Passat. We are on the embankment of the river Volga. And the weather is gloomy and it's going to rain, but we are going to have an interesting time at the local museum. In the 19th century, this building was the residential house of the merchant of the Third Guild, Vasily Ivanovich Mushtakov. The exhibition begins with a corridor which clearly explains that Vasily Mushtakov was a passionate hunter. Now we are in the hall of bourgeois life. Meshen, a class of small town traders, artisans and low-level employees until 1917. The petty bourgeois class was lower in status than the merchant class. But it was Miss Chain who opened the largest part of town real estate. This cross stitch looks amazing. Exhibits for this exhibition were donated to the museum by the descendants of the merchant Mushtakov. The guy told an interesting story. In the 1960s, a dormitory for college students was opened in this building. One summer, uh, renovations were started, and in the process of replacing the old floor, a huge treasure was discovered. If I am not mistaken, eight chests were found with expensive natural furs, fabrics that had become unusable due to long-term storage in the ground. There was also a lot of silverware, an expensive table and tea sets, but all the goods were sold at auction and the lands went to the town treasury. So, unfortunately, all the treasure are irretrievably lost, and only the person who found the treasure received a pair of tea, a cup and salsa as a reward from the state. This person's daughter kindly provides the cup and saucer for events held by the museum, but is not ready to present it to the museum permanently. Over time, the Third Merchant Guild was abolished, and this layer of the population began to be called machine. This is a yarn-making machine. Next hall is a hall of peasant antiquity. At the entrance, if you noticed, we are greeted by a big doll of an old cooper. Cooperation skills were very developed in Mariinsky Passat. In this room, in addition to items from peasant life, you can see finds from the sites of the peasant war that took place near Marinsky Passat in 1774. The leader of the peasant war was Emilian Pugachev. He wanted to achieve the abolition of serfdom for peasants. During their short stay in this area, they left behind only the memories of their actions contemporaries, captured in archived documents. In the morning, in Sunday, the Pugachev's followers hanged about ten people. During the day, they plundered and set fire to a church in the village, executed the priest Ivan Petrov, destroyed a pub and all the wine reserves, they also stole government money and left. However, poorly armed detachments of peasants were defeated. Many were executed or killed under torture. Now we are in the office of a timber merchant. An antique safe for storing money attracts special attention here. The safe is metal and if you close the top and lock it with the key, then 15 bolts will lock the safe which makes it very difficult for thieves to open it. Plus, there is another locked hidden place inside. The office smoothly transitions into the fireplace room and then into the living room. And as you can see, museum visitors leave coins in the safe for good luck and to get rich. In this frame, you can see the notes that were in use in Russia before the October Revolution of 1917. 
Look at what a solid desk the timber merchant had. In such a mirror as here on the wall, during my childhood, I think, was in every house. My nanny had two of them, and everyone I knew had them. Exactly the same. An interesting exhibit in the fireplace room is a musical instrument, Fais Harmonium. This instrument was donated by composer Andrei Eshpai, who often visited Mariinsky Passat, visiting his uncle, composer Anatoly Tagaev, who lived in Mariinsky Passat. Look, it seems a merchant's wife likes to sit in this room and listen to Fais Harmonium. If you want to know more about the life of the owner of the house and what the Fais Harmonium sounds like, scan the barcode. Now we are in the living room. The merchant family held celebrations here and welcomed guests. At the request of museum visitors, a tea party with bagels and gingerbread can be organized here. You will be offered tea, which is brewed here using local fragrant herbs. On the wall, we can see a reproduction of Empress Maria Alexandrovna, wife of the Russian Tsar Alexander II, in whose honor the village of Sandir was renamed the town of Mariinsky Passat. The petition for renaming was sent by peasants because the status of a town dweller allowed them to join the merchant guild. In June 1856, the request was granted. And Sandem began to be called a town Mariinsky Passat. Well, what would a merchant's living room be without a piano? We went down to the semi-basement where the refectory and kitchen are located. On the right side there are two windows in the wall through which uh, kitchen workers handed over ready-made dishes to the merchant family. At the moment the windows are decorated with embroidery and musical instruments. At the end of the excursion we went up to the second floor to the girl's room called Svetolka. Usually, this is what the room of a young girl looked like, who was betrothed and was going to get married in the near future. The girl always stayed in the room and was not allowed to go out and meet her friends or her fiancé. She was preparing a dowry for her future family life. The girl sewed bedding sets, embroidered and had to sew uh, and embroider a shirt for her future husband. So her life wasn't easy. The girl also made pillows. The pillows were stuffed with poultry feathers, and the more pillows, the better and the richer the bride. We went on such an interesting excursion today, and on the river Volga embankment, opposite the museum, you can find a monument of Empress Maria, in honor of whom the town Mariinsky Passat received its name. Thanks for watching and bye-bye!